And finally, here's our winter outlook for the upcoming winter, 2021-22. And yes, another La Nina winter is expected. Um, sometimes we call uh, consecutive back-to-back -back La Nina winters a double dip La Nina. What exactly does that mean for us? Well, let's first look at last winter, which was also the La Nina winter. Uh, the official winter outlook that I showed you last winter called for above normal temperatures uh, more likely across the southern states and below normal across the northern plains and Pacific Northwest. And that kind of fits the pattern of a typical La Nina winter. But uh, what exactly happened? Well, we had above normal temperatures across the northern tier of states and slightly below normal across the southern and central U.S. Now these are 90-day averages compared to normal, so um, within this 90-day period there were some very, very cold temperatures and some very mild temperatures, but the 90-day average looks like that. And when we go back and look at the, the outlook for last winter, uh, which is an attempt to compare the 90-day average with reality, it, it really didn't match up very well. We had below normal temperatures across much of the deep south, and we had above normal in the, in the north. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and look at precipitation. Last winter, the outlook called for above normal precipitation across the northern states, uh, especially from the Great Lakes down into the upper Ohio Valley, and below normal chances uh, were quite high in Texas and uh, generally higher than normal across the southern states. So what exactly did happen? had below normal precipitation across the northern plains and northern Rockies, uh, much above normal in the middle Atlantic states, and uh, fairly close to normal across the southern south central U.S. So in general, not a whole lot of skill there. We had uh, very dry conditions in the far north where above normal precipitation was predicted. So. What exactly went wrong? Well, last year was a moderate La Nina winter, which is what had been forecast. The, the La Nina forecast was correct. It was the impacts of the La Nina that really didn't pan out. If we look a little more closely at what happened, uh, February nationally was one of the coldest on record. It was uh, the coldest in about 32 years across the nation. December through January, you may not remember because nothing happened. It was a very mild start to the winter, not much to talk about. Uh, the thing most people do remember is the Texas cold blast in February. That was the costliest winter weather event in our nation since 1980. And a lot of uh, power issues there in Texas and utility companies just could not keep up. But uh, the early part of the winter was actually noteworthy for a different reason, uh, one of the warmest Januaries on record. So how do you describe last winter? Probably the best way would be to call it uh, a tale of two winters. <clears throat> but how do we convey that in a winter outlook? The winter outlook is a 90-day average, so to talk about a winter like last winter, uh, currently the format of the winter outlook um, is not capable of doing that. So our daily, weekly, and even monthly precision is just not conveyed in a seasonal 90-day outlook. So the recommended use of a winter outlook is more for planning or budgeting resources over the entire season. For example, if you're planning to uh, determine your road salt stockpiles or if you're an energy uh, manager heating oil demand. But one should not use the winter outlook for particular periods of time, um, like planning a ski trip or planning what the chances are of a white Christmas. That's really not going to be covered by a winter outlook, which is more of a 90-day average. So again, what went wrong last winter? Well, here's what a La Nina normally looks like. Uh, the dark blue line is a basically a, a description of the average location of the jet stream. And although it's highly variable, it typically comes into the U.S. 
in the northwestern states and then dips down across the Ohio Valley region. And where it dips down, uh, that often is where cold air can seep down into the U.S. And so it often results in uh, low normal temperatures across the Great Lakes and the northern plains, whereas the deep south, uh, south of the jet stream, stays relatively mild and relatively dry. And that is the basis for most uh, La Nina winter outlooks, such as this winter. But last winter, the jet stream stayed well to the north uh, through December and January. So we ended up with a, a mild January across most of the country. But then in February, uh, that dip in the jet stream that you see over the Ohio Valley, well, it dipped all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. So we ended up with uh, extreme cold coming all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Uh, so things like that can happen where the winter is divided into uh, different categories and the winter outlook won't do a good job of, of showing that. With all that said, what is the winter outlook for this winter? Um, above normal temperatures appear more than likely across a good part of the country uh, except over the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. Again, this, this looks similar to last winter's outlook because it is another La Nina winter. And the precipitation outlook also looks very similar. Um, again, it calls for above normal precipitation across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley and below normal across the Deep South. So yes, it looks similar to last winter and last winter's averages did not pan out. Uh, and that's something to keep in mind is that uh, this is a 90 day average uh, but what about locally here, uh, past La Nina winters? Uh, we've had significant wintertime tornadoes. Uh, the January 2000 Owensboro tornado it was an EF3 that pretty much sliced through the center of Owensboro. And <clears throat> that is not uncommon. We have uh, some somewhat elevated severe weather in the uh, La Nina winters, although last winter was an exception. Uh, if you take our snowfall during La Nina winters and take an average of it, it comes out pretty close to average, about 10 inches in Paducah, 13 in Evansville. That's normal for an entire winter, and uh, that is pretty close to what we had last winter. La Nina winters, with that dip in the jet stream over the Ohio Valley, make us abnormally prone to Arctic cold outbreaks, uh, similar to what we had uh, last February. So, in summary, La Nina uh, can be a highly variable winter where the jet stream changes location, but oftentimes it dips into the Ohio Valley, and that means the storm track will come through our area. Um, if the storm track is a little bit north of our area, we can have uh, thunderstorms. If it's south of our area, uh, that's highly favorable for winter storms. So, La Ninas can be uh, very busy winters, but when you look at last winter, which was basically a tale of two winters, you cannot lump all La Ninas into one category. They're just not the same.